am Otis Roper. I am Brandon Roper. And together we are still the Super Roper Brothers. This is another episode of our fall season festival of horror films and selections. So this is where we're going to recommend some scary movies to you. Yes, scary oh. stories. With scary Yes, the bats. It's the scariest. The scary. Spider Man. Yes. Candy corn. The worst candy. The wor- black licorice. The worst candy. If you give candy. me candy corn, it's because you hate me <laughs> and life. I know there's some of you out there who like candy corn, but you are in fact wrong. All right, moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we got first? Our first film today is going to take us back to the year 1997, I believe. Man. Event Horizon. This morning, TDRS picked up an automated navigation beacon broadcasting at two minute intervals in Neptune orbit. Neptune orbit. This is incredible. It's the event horizon. She's come back. Now, I want to let y'all know at this particular time in my life, I was too hard in the yard. Okay, I was out here in these streets and I was uh, involved in lots of, you know, uh, thug- thuggetry. So we was out here, so we was hard. And I went and saw this movie in the theater with some of my other boys, and we was hard. And we went and saw that movie in the theater. We saw Event Horizon in the theater, and it was 10 minutes. We was all like, bro, bro, hold me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was it's messed see, up. It's funny, because I saw it years later, because y'all didn't take me, which is fine, because I was like, you know, I was like 12 at the time. So I, I saw it years later, and it was still horrifying like it is one of those films that is just visually like it'll break you down it, it'll it'll make you go oh my god what did i just see so what actually makes the film frightening isn't what you see it's what you don't see and that's what it cues into something primal something terrifying on the inside of each of us because we all have something that if it doesn't scare you it definitely weirds you out and this crew is launching this brand new kind of hyperdrive that folds space and time. Yeah. And it's supposed to take them through a dimension so they can get up where they want to. Well, they turn it on for the first time ever and nobody ever hears from the Event Horizon ever again. Event Horizon is the culmination of a secret government project to create a spacecraft capable of faster than light flight. The ship doesn't really go faster than light. What it does is it creates a dimensional gateway that allows it to jump instantaneously from one point of the universe to another light years away. Where has she been for the last seven years, Doctor? That's what we're here to find out. I think it's 50 years later, Yeah. another rescue ship just happens to be out and they've got a transmission to go in and find it. Yeah, they find an old ship that's been out there they know what it is, but like they don't, they don't know. They don't know they don't where know it's what. been or what, why it showed up. Now they go to investigate it, and they end up making a pretty horrifying uh, dis- like gubbery, if I may say so, yeah. just in brief. And honestly, this is like it is a science fiction movie because it takes place in space. It's more horror than it is science fiction. Don't let the spaceships fool you. That ain't what this about. This and, ain't about that. And we thought it was about to be about that. Yeah. And we went and saw this movie, Whore. We came out of this movie like, you know, you were a really close friend and I love you, man. Well, listen, I remember happened. y'all coming home and being like discouraged. Like, y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all came home and y'all looked defeated. I was like, what happened at that theater? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so that's that's Event Horizon, man. Like I... Ugh. Like I honestly, I I barely I remember watching it. I remember being terrified, but like I I've been afraid to rewatch that movie. Like like as of late. If we watch it, we got to watch it once again with the front door ajar nope. in the middle of the night. No, nope. uh, you know, facing away from the door. In fact, right? I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to do that. Uh, the director for this film, I oh, can't goodness. remember. Sam Neill. Oh, Sam Neill. Lawrence 
Fishburn. Fishburn. Oh, man. I Let me tell you what. Here's why I love this movie so much. Because as a black man, which once again, I hope y'all understand. We are, in fact, black. Brothers. So, no. here we are watching this film and a black man is the captain in a sci-fi horror film. Yeah. I think that's right around the time that, uh, that uh, Deep Space Nine Deep Space Nine, so you had Cisco, you had these things. This was groundbreaking for us. It was like, yeah, we can be the captain. I mean, look, when I was a kid, the only person I saw on television that was like, you know, a, a black man who was like, you know, an ar- articulate person who wasn't a, wasn't a pimp was LeVar Burton. Welcome to the Starship Enterprise from the television show Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, you might have seen me here before on the bridge as Lieutenant Geordi LaForge, the ship's navigator. As Geordi LaForge and in Reading Rainbow. Butterfly in the sky. The man's a national treasure. I don't care what anybody says. I can go to the uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know I had to. Yeah. Tell me you're not singing the rest of it in your brain. Yes. Tell me right now. No you matter what you do, you have to sing it. It's just where it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, here we, yeah. here we go. So Event Horizon, um, you have this this crew that when they finally get aboard this ship, you have the Sam Weir character played by Sam Neill. Oh. <laughs> Sam Weir? His name's Weir. He's Dr. Weir. Oh, I was thinking Sam Weir is the character from Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> oh, hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Cindy. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> so anyway, the Dr. Weir's character, he's the one who designed the hyperdrive for the Event Horizon. Oh, so yeah. He's out trying to figure out where it's been and where it's gone. And these flashbacks and these things keep happening in his mind. And they're creepy as all get out. And other people are having reactions separately, but nobody's talking about. I mean, really, what would you what would you talk about? Hey, I just saw uh, maggots um, in you know the food that I just prepared and like that. I think I'm kind of cracking up. You guys okay? Yeah. No, it's it's very psychological. But we're we before we give you too much. I say you should watch the film. It's worth watching. I remember watching it when I was young and just being terrified. It's it's worth it for our spooky stories. Our second movie that we're going to do is going to be the film, The Treat Williams Opus, Deep Rising. Welcome to the greatest pleasure ship ever built. Good times forever! I have something here, sir. I've never seen anything like this. It's a malfunction, sir. That's impossible. Where are they coming from? I don't know, sir, but whatever it is, it's... Uh... Big. Yes. Deep Rising is everything Event Horizon was without any of the overt terror. They tried really hard and just like slipped and fell. It's like if somebody's trying to roast you and they stutter. Well, yo, mama, mama, mama. No, nope, like, you nope, can't recover. No, There's no, no recovery from that. It's <laughs> over. It's That's over. around. That's all that is. There's nothing you can do. So, yeah. So, <laughs> Deep Rising is directed by Steven Summers, who goes on to direct. The Mummy afterwards, so you've probably all seen the Mummy films. But Deep Rising was his first foray into this sort of genre. Treat Williams plays the, what, for what all I can think of Indiana as Indiana Jones character. Yeah, the Ash character. Yeah, you know, the Ash character. Basically the wisecracking, quippy, you know, adventure. Courier. Yes. Yeah, they're there to, they're there, they're the smuggling team. They're there to bring these smugglers on board so they can rob this casino. He's, you know, he. They they ride the line a little bit him yeah. and his crew. You know, so he's not really good. He's not really bad. not really bad, but he's you know these other people are worse. So they're taking these mercenaries out and they're trying to rob a casino ship for some reason because apparently it's cheaper to rob a casino on water than it is to rob one on land. I don't know. Whatever. They answered a distress call. Where the hell is everybody? No. What the hell is that? They're dead in the water. So anyway, while this is happening, they get aboard the ship, and the ship is all dead. Is not all- no no not no bodies. The ship is just adrift in the middle of the ocean. They don't really know why, and that's where the that's when the hijinks and the hilarity start. 
uh, because then there's a sea monster that is, I don't even know what to call it. It's a bunch of tentacles. And yeah, they just eat you. They're tentacles that eat you and like dissolve you because at one point one guy gets like regurgitated or something. It's really gross. But the film itself is so it, it, it's. I recommend it because it's absurd. Like it's it is fun. It's yeah, a, it's a fun film. Yeah, it's, it's just not quite as scary as it's unnerving. Yeah, but it's it's mostly just like wow, somebody made this movie. It's fun, but it's just somebody made it. It's not as it's not quite as great as like an Army of Darkness, no. but it is it is worth watching. It is a cheese ball fest. If you like cheese and schlock like we do, you will love uh, Deep Rising. But what the hell is that? The girl from Ipanema. But it's I still it. just fun. And, I, and that's why there's some movies that don't get a pass from us, not because they're uh, bad, they're just not fun. Yeah, they don't have a good We're about tone. fun movies, and Deep Rising is fun, even if it is a bit gross at, at portions, uh, a bit like... <laughs> But I think it has a good-natured heart behind what they're actually trying to yeah. do. And you know what I, I think the reason why we're a little bit easier on movies like this is because this is not based on a previously existing intellectual property. This was somebody making a movie. They called it something else. Yeah, and they just took a shot. They and took they, a shot. Yeah. And, they, and hey, hey, I had fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it kind of stupid? Yeah. 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 Would I watch it again <laughs> if it's on TV? Yeah. Yo, yeah. Why not? It's fun. It's a good time. So that leads us to our third film, um, which is the classic Jaws. Jaws is a film directed by Steven Spielberg that was written by Peter Benchley, was the original author of the book, and I have read the, the book itself. There are some differences between the book and the theatrical version, but the theatrical version in itself is a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece because Steven Spielberg had enough testicular fortitude and drive to work around all the problems during the filming and made a better story because the effects didn't work like he wanted them to. In fact, the shark didn't work till I believe the last maybe a quarter of the film. So he filmed all this stuff before without the shark working. If it wasn't for the soundtrack done by the legendary Oh yes. John Williams. There is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution without change, without passion, and without logic. It lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. <laughs> Sir John Williams. Sir. I don't, I don't know if he's been knighted. He, just, he should be. He's knighted in my mind. Yeah, yeah he should be. Well, yeah. anyway, because like he's a national treasure. John Williams puts his soul in that soundtrack. And when I heard Steven Spielberg, when he first heard the music for it, he was like, is this all there is? Is there more? Just with the dun, 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 dun. He was like, that's not going to catch. It's not going to stick. Yeah. And he got thinking about it more and more. And he was like, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. John Williams just goes over his house and shines his Oscar up. It's just like, He's just like, like yeah, me and my friend here think it's going to work out just fine. <laughs> so so uh, uh, the Chief Brody character, played by Roy Scheider. Oh, yeah. Lives on Amityville Island. He's He's in New York, okay? He's not from that place, and so he doesn't really get along with them. He doesn't like water. He's not about boats. And what happens is a body comes up on the shore of a young girl who's been killed by something, and the townspeople want it to be anything but a shark. Yeah. And so you have the chief putting together the clues and saying, this is going to be bad, and the townspeople keep saying, no, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. You know, kind of like... People do in real life. It's it's a it's a great story. Um, the mayor is infamous for being the politician who doesn't listen. 
uh, to the person who knows what's going on, of course. But it's a it's a fantastic like just just a great way to kind of introduce like, hey, listen to the people who know what's going on. You've got young Richard Dreyfus in the movie mm-hmm. who's doing his best, and like I, I think he I think there was some sort of beef between him. And Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw. Him and Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw was a notorious alcoholic while filming Jaws and didn't get along with Richard Dreyfus anyway. So their characters are not supposed to get along with in the film, and that makes it even more believable because they really don't like each other. Shark this shark is supposed to be something supernatural, and yeah. it's never spoken. It, it happens in a blink and you'll miss it like dialogue where uh, Chief Brody asked uh, Quint, have you ever seen a shark do like this? And he's like, no. None of man's fantasies of evil can compare with the reality of Jaws. Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, Richard Dreyfus, Jaws. See it before you go swimming. And it's unspoken throughout the entire film. The Indianapolis uh, dialogue yeah. scene, one of the greatest monologue scenes of all time in film. Cannot recommend this film highly enough because this is what happens when you have all the ambition with not quite so much of the money and know-how. Yeah. Filming on the ocean is really, really difficult. You shouldn't do this. Yeah. So he did it and he was successful with it. Other films try to do this exact same thing. Water World, oh, it man. didn't turn out that hot. Yeah. Um, so I get props where props is due. Ambition and drive can sometimes make things better than they actually are. Yeah. I think Jaws is one of those that you, you need to see. It's a great film. Yeah. But Jaws is another slow burner. It's not fast. It's a slow film, but it's a great film. Oh, I think it's 75, actually, two years 75. before Star Wars. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Heaven that hurts. Yeah, it is what it is. Our fourth and final film is a favorite of ours. This came out in 1999, starring one Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, Ian McDiarmid is in the movie. Man. Uh, Casper Van Dien is in the movie. Casper Van Dien! Yeah, that's right. Rico! I mean, Rico! Hey! What? So <laughs> many actors and actresses. It is a, it's a great movie. Shout out to Ray Park. Oh yeah, Rain Park is in the movie as the headless one. And, and the film we're talking about is Sleepy Hollow, by the way. They never said the name. One. Christopher. Oh yeah, the, Walk the Christopher Walken. <laughs> yes, he plays a character who doesn't uh, have a head, and he <laughs> goes around reclaiming them. He's just. I'm gonna take you've got a nice head there. It'd be a shame if uh someone, yeah, someone uh took it off. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's a great movie. <laughs> love it. It's a mystery. Really. Yes. That's what I love about the movie. It's not it's supernatural, but there is an element of realism to how we solve what's occurring here. It's a murder mystery with a supernatural twist. Yeah. The assassin is a man of flesh and blood, and I will discover him. That's all. That's all it is, and they play it up as that, and that's the success of that. Tim Burton and Johnny Depp, when they come together, they make these incredible, gothic, amazing films that are better than what I think that we even knew what we had at the time. Yeah. Because they could have been more graphic, there could have been less graphic and we would have lost some things. They yeah. weren't afraid of the blood. They weren't afraid of the uh, of the decaffeinations. De- 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 Decaffeinated. Chopping off heads at full game. Yes. And I would say this this is a film that is bloodier than it is gory. It yes. is, there's a lot of blood in the movie. There's not too much gore. There's not too much... Like of the horror that's trying to like gross you out. It's more like, oh, I'm uncomfortable because there's blood like splatter. But it's not like, oh, here's some guts and some viscera and some other stuff to go along with. Like, no, that's gross. But what I love about it is it's a rated R film that makes sure that you know that everyone could be killed. Yes. There, there's no immunity. There's no, uh, oh, because you're a baby, we're not going to like... Uh, not this movie. Yes. Yeah. I also love that our, our our protagonist in this film is not combat capable. 
Ichabod Crane is a thinker. He is not out there, you know, out, yeah, there, out there throwing him up, you know, yeah. like, look if you buck. No, he will be bucked <laughs> <laughs> because he's not that guy. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a great film, a great murder mystery. There's a lot going on, a lot of layers. Like I said, a lot of great character actors in it. Um, it it's really just worth watching. I, I can't stress that enough, especially during Halloween time. I mean, come on, Sleepy Hollow is an American legend. It's one of our first American legends, you know. The, you know the, so you owe it to yourself. You really do. Legend of Sleepy Hollow is As one of those American things. American to go and see this yeah. movie to yes. make sure that you. Uh, let me be clear. Don't and get uh, don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> so watch yeah, that movie. watch Sleepy the movie. Hollow's Sleepy Hollow is right? great. Okay, so the four of them: Event Horizon, Deep Rising, Jaws, mm. and Sleepy Hollow. These yeah. are another four of our spooky recommendations. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we may end up doing in-depth film reviews for anything that we do in our recommendations. But once again, it's up to you, the people. The people. Maybe you don't like the movies. Yeah. I don't like you guys' movie because of this. Hey, Let us know. Discuss it with us. Maybe you hate Deep Rising. We don't care. Let us know why, okay? Yeah. You love what we're talking about, hate what we're talking about, comment. Hey, we can take it. Come yeah, on. we'll be fine. Sure. It's all good. Come we'll on, have fun. Clean it. Anyway. Clean it. <laughs> come on, please. Until you guys go back, <laughs> I am Brandon Roper. And I am Otis Roper. And we are still, still the Super Roper Brothers. Hope you guys enjoy. a shark he's got lifeless eyes black eyes like a doll's eyes when he comes at you he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you